And now we return to As the Paint Dries. Painterly? Paisley, how are you? You're back and you've had a makeover. It's true. I just really felt I needed a new look, you know? It's true, Painterly. You did. <sighs> Paisley, is Biff around? Biff? No one's seen Biff for a while. Really? You kind of broke Biff's heart, Painterly. Paisley, I didn't mean to hurt him. I mean, he had relationships with Sandy, Glossy, me, and Stencil, but that's it. Poor Biff. I have to go, Painterly. My cousin's performing an exorcism on my boyfriend who's possessed by a demon. Oh, of course. Good to see you. Where are you, Biff? Biff! Biff, is that you? Painterly. Oh, Biff, what's become of you? Painterly, leave me. I'm no good to anyone. Biff, that isn't true. I'm nothing without you. Biff, stop. Like yesterday's trash left outside by the road. Okay, Biff, this really is unattractive. Painterly. <laughs> You're so beautiful. <laughs> okay, Biff, time to stand up. Okay, Biff, get up. Stand up. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Painterly. <clears throat> you are my greatest love. Okay, Biff, that's enough. This isn't about romance. You don't need a lover. You need a friend. And I'm going to be that friend. Now, come along. Where are we going? To get you clean for a start, and then to the barber. But my beard is so manly. It's not good, Biff, but let's just start with a shower. Shower? Not like that. Also, I think I need to stop at the store for some lice shampoo. Sometimes when a super couple breaks up, it seems like one half gets all the good breaks. Things just seem to fall into place for them as they gracefully land on their entirely new feet, while the other half gets stuck, waiting around in the garage, collecting yet another layer of dust. Their confidence shot, this newly minted singleton, may feel purposeless, void of any spark or specialness. But perhaps as painful as it was, that breakup may have uncovered something truly remarkable and uniquely their own. If you remember from last week's fable, we met this gigantic beast that had been living in my garage for over a year I had finally decided to tackle it, so the crew came out and helped me with the official breakup. There it is. Broken up. I started with that top hutch piece, and so we scooted the buffet back into storage. But now I was ready to take care of that lower half, and so my first job was to clear a path and then get that big boy up onto some wheels. Here he is. Biff appears to be a fairly standard buffet, most likely from the 60s or 70s. He is absolutely filthy. But even through the many layers of scum, you can see that he appears to have a very interesting feature. A herringbone inlaid top. No one had really been able to see this top because, of course, his partner had been covering it up all of these years. Biff's drawers had good action, although I was disappointed to see that they were lined with some kind of brown felt, but that's usually not a big deal. You can see that cool inlaid feature is repeated on the inset door panels as well, and that his hardware is basic, but I don't hate it actually. I also took a picture of Biff's undercarriage in case I decided he needed some new feet 
just like his ex. Then I began his makeover. I started by removing the drawer and door hardware and then taking off his doors and labeling them carefully. <laughs> you know that a piece is in desperate need of cleaning when your hand is covered in cobwebs after handling a door. For Biff's bath, I started with just a basic wipe down. He had so much scum on him. Sorry, Biff. I just needed to get some of that material off. And then I gave him a good spray of simple green, making up a bucket of hot soapy water and giving him a very good thorough scrub down. Ugh, he was so dirty. It was sort of like washing a car that had been off-roading a year ago and never got washed. Biff needed a thorough rinse, and so I got out the hose. I know this is a tad upsetting for some folks, so I will just say that it was a dry and sunny day on the day that I was cleaning, and I felt like Biff really needed this. Then I decided to tackle those lined drawers. I tried to see if that felt liner would just come up easily, but no such luck. So I got out my heat gun and started using it to loosen the glue. Okay, so here's where this whole time-lapse thing is so great, because unfortunately, this took quite a while. It was sticky, furry, stinky, burny work. Lest anyone think that furniture work is all glitz and glamour. <laughs> no, no, my friends. Occasionally it is furry knuckles and 50 year old glue under your fingernails. Side note, I absolutely should be wearing gloves. My heat protection gloves are right over on one of those shelves behind me. This is just a great example of being overly optimistic and then realizing, nope, there's a reason why you're supposed to be wearing your gloves. All right, that was kind of rough. And I knew that I still had all that residual glue to deal with, but I decided to move on and tackle the sanding because that would probably be a relatively straightforward, easy step. I mean, look at the state of Biff's finish. It is really patchy and failing. So of course it'll come right off. Ha, no siree, the finish that was still there was super stubborn and did not want to release no matter which sander or which grit of paper I tried. I sanded and sanded for close to two hours. Yes, I am not kidding, two hours. And of course I did make progress, but I could not remove everything. And so I grudgingly got out my chemical stripper. I'm using Citrus Strip, and I've actually been meaning to try out some new chem strippers, but I just haven't gotten around to ordering them. I brushed on the Citrus Strip with a chip brush, and I let that sit for about a half an hour or so, and then came back and scraped it off using a plastic scraper. You can see that it did not take off all of the old stain, and so I used my wire brush to scrub the stripper into those stubborn areas. And yes, again, I should be wearing gloves. Kind of satisfying to watch this part, isn't it? <laughs> oh, darn it, Biff, really? 
This too went on for quite some time, scraping and scrubbing and scraping and scrubbing, trying to get that very stubborn stain out of those wood fibers. You can see this is also not glamorous work. It is stinky and sticky and also a little bit backbreaky work. And it definitely eats up a lot of time. But you can really start to see why I was fighting so hard to remove this old stain. Underneath, there was something really kind of special. So once I had removed as much of the stain that I felt I could, I used some mineral spirits to clean up the chemical stripper, really scrubbing it in well with some steel wool. And then I used my surf prep sander to give Biff's body a good scuff sand. The next morning, I gave the top and the door panels a good finish sanding and then wiped up all of that dust. I thought I might try some acetone to loosen the old glue in Biff's drawers, so I grabbed my daughter's nail polish remover and saturated some rags with it and just left that to sit in the drawers for a little bit. Then I got out my tape and I taped off the inside floors of the buffet and I got out my primer. Before I started, I gave my little chip brush a trim. This is a good trick to use if you want your chip brush to have a little bit more control. And then I began rolling and painting on a good coat of shellac-based primer. I taped off that very special herringbone top and then I primed that outer trim portion of the top and then I did the same thing for the four doors. Once the primer had dried, I gave it a good sanding with a fine grit rad pad, wiped back the dust, and then I was finally ready to paint. Biff is going super cash, laid back and cool and neutral, and so is getting a coat of Knapsack Khaki by Melange Paints. I decided to use my Zebra two and a half inch brush. It is so soft and malleable and it covers a lot of ground quickly for a brush.
After all of that dried, I did a quick sanding and then I added a second coat. When I removed the tape on the top, I saw that some of that groove didn't get painted exactly perfectly. And so I used an artist brush to bring the knapsack khaki into the groove. Then I gave the three drawers a good sanding in preparation for painting. But before I painted, decided to try some Goo Gone on that very stubborn glue residue. Yes, when we last left Biff's drawers, I had tried some acetone, but that sadly had failed completely. Busy sanding and scraping Biff's top, I had left his drawers alone all day. <laughs> I'm sorry, making myself laugh. And before I got back to them, the acetone had dried up and those cloths had stuck back down into Biff's ancient glue. Ugh, Biff. I brought those drawers inside and actually scrubbed them with hot water and soap. I was willing to risk waterlogging them at this point and was actually regretting trying to save them, thinking I probably should have just replaced them. But miraculously, a lot of the old glue finally started to loosen, and I put the drawers out into the pale February sun to dry. It was finally time to unwrap the doors and give them a quick finish sanding, and then I reattached them, gave their insides a quick cleanup and finish sanding, and sanded those beautiful inlaid door panels. I went back to check on the drawers and decided to invite these little dudes inside. The last thing I needed now was for someone to suddenly have the urge to mark. I think that might have just been the straw that broke the furniture fabler's back. I gave Biff's top a final finish sanding, making sure that I got off any little bits of stray paint. And here, let me just show you how cool Biff's top really is. This is the view from the back of the piece. This beautiful herringbone feature is not a veneer. These are solid wood pieces, fairly thick, that are making up this beautiful patterned top. Okay, if you've watched any of my other fables, you might have heard me talk about how important it is to fill existing cracks in wood furniture before you paint. Cracks that look just fine in a wood finish can look pretty unattractive once they are in the comparatively flat appearance of paint. For some reason, I believed that Biff's door cracks would look kind of cool, unfilled, and of of course, I was wrong, 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 wrongity, wrong, wrong. So here I am, late in the game, doing a shallow fill of these corner joints. Back to Biff's drawers. <clears throat> this is my last ditch effort. I'm essentially shaving this glue residue off with my sander. And thankfully, after spending way too many hours with Biff's drawers, they could finally pass inspection and be called clean. I sanded back that filler in the door corners and then I did all my little paint touch-ups and then it was finally time to seal Biff. I decided to use some clear coat in flat by Dixie Belle and I grabbed their very flat scarlet brush to apply it. I had considered using hemp oil again I'm sure that would have been absolutely beautiful, but I kept thinking about all of the fabulous parties Biff was sure to be hosting in the future and figured a poly top coat would give his very special top more protection. If you are new to top coating, it really isn't too difficult. You just wanna make sure not to overwork the product and try to keep a wet edge, which just 
really means that you connect your next pass of top coat to your last. It's really sort of like working with a finicky paint. After that first coat dried, I came back and gave Biff a second coat of sealer. Ah, hardware time. Okay, these are Biff's original poles, and I have to say I really like them. They are simple and have a beautiful patina, and so I decided to keep them and put them back on the doors and then reattach the drawer pulls. Drop drawer pulls are not my favorite, but again, I really liked these and I felt they would actually work really well with Biff's new refreshed look. Okay, it was finally time to fling Biff onto his back and clean up his undercarriage <clears throat> and add his new feet. Yep, he too was going to be getting a fresh pair. So I removed his old metal footsie tabs and we'll just have to wait till the end to see his new shoes. I couldn't believe it. It was finally time to put Biff's drawers back in. Of course, he wouldn't be Biff without giving me one more struggle. But I finally got his drawer slides in the right spot. And phew, Biff was done. Biff! Okay, do you remember our tower's dungeon? Who was dumped? and dejected, fuzzy and flaky, full of self-pity, but with a hidden treasure. And here he is now. Somehow I think Biff is going to be a-okay. In his modern two-tone suit, we can now see Biff's incredible inlay feature. Without a drop of stain or paint wash, the original timbers just glow against the soft neutral of the paint. Of course, our metallic bees are perfect for those once furry, fuzzy drawers, and Biff's new feet are the perfect clean reference to his herringbone feature while giving him a modest lift. But from far away or right up close, it's that top that is just giving Biff new life. A true show-stopping neutral, Biff could support just about any decor with his laid-back, elegant strength. So what did hunky Biff the Buffet cost me? Well, aside from a sore back, out-of-pocket costs were his four feet, they were $25, and then another 30 bucks for primer paint and paper, bringing my total out-of-pocket cost to $55. But what did Biff cost me in time? Well, I carefully added it up, taking out dry time and allowing for camera setup. And still, Biff took me 22 hours. Biff's fuzzy drawers probably accounted for at least a quarter of that time. And the other time suck was, of course, all of the effort to reveal his very special patterned top and door panels. So what would I list Biff for? Well, if I use an hourly rate of $45 and add in my out-of-pocket costs, Biff would list for $1,045. So just as Painterly presented an interesting pricing situation, so does Biff on the other end. Will I be paid for my time on this one? Hmm. Doubtful, but I will say this, though Biff was an entirely high maintenance, pain in the neck poop head to work with, I have to say, he's kind of gorgeous. Kind of crushing on him a little bit. 
biff into every furniture redesigner's life, a little biff must fall. I hope you enjoyed the saga of painterly and biff. If so, please give me a thumbs up and let me know what you thought. Would you have bailed on biff? You think he's a keeper now? Oh, and make sure to join me next week when I make good on a promise that I made a year ago to a very special person. If you want the backstory, make sure you check out this other fable. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more Furniture Fables. Biff, you're a new man. Thanks, painterly. I'm feeling rustic, yet refined, effortlessly cool, with a unique texture of my own. And I'm feeling eclectically cool, with just the right amount of vintage sparkle and modern irreverent edge. Painterly. Biff, you both need to come to my dinner party next week. I feel like your presence there would definitely make me look more fabulous. <laughs>